Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. The organ is still the principal source of religious music in many places of worship. Has that been changing in recent years? Is the organ being replaced to any significant degree by alternative sources of music? That's something that will no doubt be discussed this weekend when the St. Louis chapter of the American Guild of Organists, AGO, holds its January Jubilee here. Joining me in studio to talk about the event, the organization, and the music are Dawn Risky, the music director at Christ the King Catholic Church and director of the American Guild of Organists January Jubilee. Mark Paco is a renowned concert organist who has performed all over the world. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thank you. It's I a know. joy to be here. Yeah, it's an exciting weekend coming up for you, I know. Yes. Uh, Dawn, let me begin with you. What are you going to be talking about at the Jubilee? Well, the Jubilee, we decided to make it a two-day event. So it'll start with a fabulous um, or a concert tomorrow evening, Friday evening at 7, on a Martin Ott organ. How often do you get to come to a beautiful space where there's an organ built in 2014, and the organ builder is going to be there as well? Um, <clears throat> having that experience is something that just will stick with people for a long time. Then Saturday, we have workshops planned in different areas, pipe organ, digital organ, vocal and choral music, handbell music, and then others, like how does Facebook and social media impact uh, active church musicians, um, songs of justice, works of mercy. We will also have a, a pastor and um, an organist uh, conflict resolution workshop and uh, things that you might have to do to work together in the church setting. So you're right. There will be many things talked about of how to remain relevant and and how to uh, be meaningful to people who worship today. But we also want to draw in, we know our American Guild of Organists is declining in numbers. We want to draw in people who might be interested in organ music, whether pipe or electronic or digital, um, and that is all it takes to be a part of the Guild is to love organ music. Mark Paco, uh, I think most people, when they think of organ music, think of religious music, music in the church. Is that fair? Um, well, I would say it's fair to get into the conversation, but uh, the organ is so important in so many other areas. Uh, it's in Europe, for example, um, it's a large part of the cultural life uh, where organs are found in many places, museums, uh, halls private homes. Uh, you have much of that here. But in our, our culture here, uh, church music in the United States is quite developed and um, the culture of sacred music, uh, it's you can have a career in church music here uh, more easily than, say, in Europe uh, where things uh, are done a little bit differently. But um, the organ is as relevant as ever as far as I'm concerned. I think in our changing times, we're seeing so much uh, change in the way we do business, the way we find out information, um, perhaps uh, challenges uh, with uh, church attendance and what we think of when we experience hearing the organ at church. Uh, but the, the scholarship and the study and the promotion of it are as good as ever. But, you know, in, in a lot of churches, people are not hearing organ music today. They're hearing guitars, they're hearing pianos, and they're hearing other instrumentation. It seems to be changing. Yeah, there's been, I, I would say, for decades now, beginning after Vatican Council uh, in, the, in the 60s, um, mm -hmm. where more vernacular-type music uh, mm -hmm. and other instruments were being used or promoted in churches, where that's become the norm. Um, I think everything moves in, in trends. Um, but yes, it is true that uh, the organ is used less in, in, in many places. Um, however, we see a resurgence. Their the organ building is still happening um, the scholarship, the, the uh, teaching of young organists and different programs around the country and locally um, are, are very promising in terms of uh, the art is not dead and it may look different than it used to, but it's certainly got a bright future. Dawn, you alluded to this uh, earlier in talking about a shortage of organists. Is, is that uh, something that is achieving critical mass, perhaps? There will always be a need for fine, well-trained musicians. And I see weekly on our 
local uh, little Facebook sites. Oops, we need an organist for this one. We need someone to come in and play for that. Now, it's, it's interesting. If you're just doing one and you're subbing here and there, of course you can't make a living wage. And I got to say, bless those parishes that pay a musician to be there to maintain a music ministry, as I am able to do, um, so that that capability is there. And we can do more than just play organ on Sunday. We can help make sure that that there's a pastoral, um, overreaching musical um, ministry that's that's happening. But no matter what, yeah, we are. I don't think there's enough organists out there right now for the need that there is. Mark, is the organ used in religious services and anything but uh, Christian churches or other religions? Well, I, I do know in uh, the Reformed tradition, um, in the Jewish tradition, uh, although I have no personal experience playing for um, uh, a Jewish service, um, yeah, that's a good question. I know there's there's got to be a good answer. But in town, two or three of our our guild members do play at Jewish synagogues. Right. So yeah. you, you know, I hate to say this, given who the both of you are and what you represent here, but you know, I, there are so many people think of the organ. They think of a cardinal baseball game <laughs> and Phantom of the Opera. That's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> So, you know, if you have a bucket list and you say, oh, I have to do this, that I would say go to an organ recital and see what it's all about, a classical organ recital, the kind that shakes the, the windows, the kind that you can feel those oh, yeah. deep bass pipes resonating. Your heartbeat assimilates to the tempo. It, it's a very um, physical experience, and the power of the organ, when used by someone who knows how to drive that, <laughs> drive that baby is is unforgettable. Mark Pekov, that's you. Yes, yes it I, is. I hope I live up to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, they've got some uh, great graphic design for the promotion of this event, and it's a, it's a very psychedelic uh, coloring rendering of my uh, headshot at the organ, and it, mm-hmm. it's called the Peco Experience. So I certainly hope yes. I can live up to the publicity. Yes. But um, one thing that I try to do as a performer when I think about programming and reaching and interacting with an audience is to um, have a lot of diverse uh, music on the program, something that would showcase the instrument, but also touches upon something uh, that um, would interest anybody. So, for example, there's in my program tomorrow, um, there's a, a jazzy arrangement of uh, Amazing Grace. And then there's some modern music, which is very rhythmic. And today, uh, the younger generations, um, most of the music is based on the beat or this driving rhythm. Um, So juxtaposing that with um, early music from the 1600s up through modern day uh, 20th century minimalistic techniques, uh, it could be very exciting. They weren't thinking George Shearing in the 16th century, were they? No. No, they weren't. (laughs) Let's let's have a taste of of the Mark Paco experience. You brought along (laughs) a little music with you and uh, set up uh, the first clip that we can listen to. The first clip is uh, the overture from uh, Elcyon, which is an opera composed by Marin Marais. He was a contemporary of Lully in the court of Louis XIV, and um, this dates from 1706, but it, this is the overture. All right. Guest Mark Peko at the audience. It certainly is a powerful instrument, and every, yes. and everybody uh, everybody certainly knows that. But it's got to be a darn difficult instrument to learn how to play, and I think that probably pushes people back from it somewhat. My my first experience with the organ, I was about fourteen, and um, the church that my family uh, went to didn't have a pipe organ. But where I took my piano lessons, that church did have a pipe organ. And little by little, I got introduced and curious to the instrument. And uh, sure enough, it didn't take long to switch from piano to wanting to just play the organ. And um, 
and not only that, but it opened so many new worlds to me. I began to travel, and uh, when I was in Italy at the age of 16, I got to hear pipe organs in grand spaces, which was a brand new experience. And um, yes, the magnitude and the sheer power of the instrument uh, was exciting, but then there's also the the whispering or the purring, the soft mm-hmm. things that it can do as well. I, I saw an interesting cartoon yesterday dealing with uh, or- organs. It showed a, a child's xylophone about one foot wide, you know, the kind with the colored things. Yes. And that's, that's, that's the way organists see the organ was the punchline or the, the cut line. And the other picture was an instrument panel of a 747 and said, this is the way everybody else sees an organ. <laughs> or, <laughs> that's exactly true. <laughs> what, what um, Dawn, are you doing here locally to promote organ music and, and appreciation of that music? This January Jubilee is an effort that the National Office of the American Guild of Organists has asked chapters to take on. So they're four years in, and there are four January Jubilees around the country this year, we, one of them being at St. Louis. So the 150 members of our local chapter are working together to get more people interested in pipe organs. So uh, we have the recital at Peace Lutheran Church Friday night that we've been promoting hardly, including on Facebook, our and, January And that's Mark. Mark. That is, is Mark Mark's playing. Recital. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. it'll be so good. And then on Saturday, if you have not yet registered, we are still accepting registrations for a day of workshops. And there are five areas, pipe organ, digital organ, vocal music, handbells, if you have handbells at your church, and other things like the Facebook. So um, we are still receiving registrations. There There are 80 people that are planning to be there that day, and it includes lunch. It's $25 for the whole day. Um, And in that, we're especially hoping to reach out to people who maybe have never been a part of the American Guild of Organists so that anyone who comes and wants to be part of the guild, there's a six-month complimentary uh, membership that's also offered. Mark, what else can you tell us about the recital? What's going to make it so very special in your mind? Uh, Well, the organ is fantastic and uh, built by Martin Ott. It was completed in 2014, and it's a tracker action organ. And what that means for non-organists is that when you press the key down, you're actually moving a physical lever that goes all the way to the pipe to open up uh, the palate so that the Mm -hmm. pipe gets the rush of air for it to speak. And uh, with that, you can uh, be a little more sensitive with uh, details about the articulation of the the music. Um, And when I thought about my program for this particular instrument, uh, early music, like 17th century music by Swelenk or... um, early English music from the same time period, um, or Marin Murray, as you've heard a few minutes ago. Uh, Early music works great on an instrument like this, but it also um, really showcases uh, contemporary music as well. So I have um, a bit of um, some slushy George Shearing uh, jazz uh, arrangement of Amazing Grace, and then some fun stuff by Guy Beauvais, a modern uh, Swiss composer, uh, and uh, Peter Eben, a 20th century Czech composer. So a lot of variety and uh, uh, interesting sounds coming out of the uh, coming out of the beast. That's at 7 o'clock Friday night at the Peace Lutheran Church. That's in Melville, isn't it? Yes, uh, it gone? is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mark, you know, uh, is there a particular jargon with regard to, uh, to organ music? You just said a moment ago, for instance, that uh, talking about its speaking. Is, are, there, are there different terms that are used for... Organ music, perhaps? I, well, I think it's easy to refer to organ music and playing the organ and the organ as a living instrument because it requires, like we do, lungs to breathe. It requires support. It's part of the whole movement of the universe as far as I'm concerned. And so when we talk about um, organ music or the organ, it's so easy to personify it and give it those kind of qualities. Dawn, how, how are organs made today? Different, really different from those of the 16th century. Well, again, we live in such an explosion of things that the organ at Peace Lutheran is made very much the same way that it would have been made in the 1600s in Germany. Um, It's using some time-honored traditions. That's something Martin Ott does well. But then we have other organs that are going to do everything digitally. So they're going to sample how what's the organ sound like in a cathedral in, in England. We'll bring that digital sound and put it to every note you press down. You're going to hear 
the digital rendering. And electronics, again, they're, they're going to be the most affordable. They're just trying to make a sound that sounds like it. Uh, so as many ways as there are. Our, our time is winding uh, down. We have yeah. an, another clip. Tell us briefly what that is, and we'll say goodbye while that music plays. This is the Preludium Fugen Chacon of Dietrich Buxtehude, uh, who was a late uh, 17th century uh, North German composer. And I believe it shows off the Martin Ott uh, kind of sound very well. Of course, this is a recording from a different organ. That's right. we'll, we'll listen to that as we say goodbye. I'll point out for our audience the American Guild of Organists January Jubilee opening recital by Mark Paco, Friday at 7 o'clock at Peace Lutheran, Lutheran Church in Melville. And AGO's January Jubilee takes place Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the same location. Is that correct? Yes, Dawn? yes. And if you want to find out more, agostlouis.org. All righty. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Looking forward to tomorrow. Archive versions of the program are available for download or podcast at stlpublicradio.org. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. Thanks for listening. I'm Don Marsh. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.